Hi, I'm Professor Harry Porter. In this and the next several videos, we'll talk about finite state machines. We'll also talk about regular languages and regular expressions. In this video, we'll begin by describing finite state machines and giving a formal definition. Finite state machines are sometimes called finite state automata. I should probably mention right now that this word automaton has an unusual plural. The plural is automata, so you say one automaton or two automata. So the finite state machine is also called a finite automaton or finite state automaton. We'll also abbreviate it with FSM. The finite state machine is the simplest model of computation. Essentially, it models a very small computer or a microcontroller. The key aspect of this little computer is that it has very, very limited memory. The memory is not only finite, but it's also usually quite small. Typically, uh, there might be a small number of states uh, which can be represented in a small number of bits. So, uh, these things do not have an extremely large amount of power like some of the other models of computation that we'll see later on. We'll also be talking about regular languages and regular expressions as well as finite state machines. All three of these are equal in their expressive power. In other words, all three of these formalisms describe the same set of languages or the same class of language and we'll see that none is more powerful than the other and each can be, be converted into the other. So uh, these things are all in some sense equivalent. Let's begin with an example finite state machine that shows all the key aspects of any finite state machine. First of all we see a directed graph. These circles are states and the edges are transitions. Sometimes we call the states nodes, so you can see this thing has four states or, or four nodes if you prefer to say it that way. And each one of these edges here, these arrows, represents a transition and we'll refer to them as edges or transitions equivalently. Also notice that every edge is labeled and that's a key, key aspect of finite state machines. The states need to be unique uh, oftentimes we'll put names on them so we can refer to them, so we can call this state A and state B. In other examples we may not bother to write the names of the states, but the edges always will be labeled with symbols. Uh, each finite state machine has exactly one node that's distinguished as the starting node or the initial node, and in this case it's node A. So this is our initial node, and we indicate it with a little arrow that comes from nowhere and that's unlabeled. So every finite state machine has one node that's the starting node, and this initial state is labeled with an arrow or, or some other notation uh, in other examples, perhaps. In addition, there's always an accepting state. Um, there can be um, uh, several accepting states, and in fact, uh, some finite state machines might not have any accepting state although that's somewhat of a degenerate case. Uh, in this case our accepting state is D, we just have one accepting state, but in other examples we might have several accepting states. These things are also called final states, and as I say there may be more than one. Technically there could be zero uh, accepting states, but that's not a very interesting finite state machine. And finally, uh, a key aspect of finite state machines is that there's some alphabet of symbols these are the symbols that label the edges, and in this particular example, our alphabet, which we symbolize with capital sigma, just consists of two symbols, 0 and 1. So those are the symbols that we can put on any of the edges. In other examples, we'll have different alphabets. Finite state machines can be used in two ways. One way is that they can be used to generate strings, and in the other way, which I'll show down here, is that they can be used to accept strings. Okay, let's say you've got a finite state machine, such as the example we showed before. You can generate a string as follows. You start at the initial state, or the starting state, and then you take transitions, um, perhaps at random. And then uh, as you traverse each edge, there's a symbol labeling that edge, and you use that symbol. And finally you end up uh, in an accepting state, and then you can stop. 
You can't stop unless you're in, in an accepting state. And as you go through the directed graph following edges, you, as each edge is, is traversed, you have a symbol, and you string all those symbols together to create a string of symbols. And the, the resulting string of symbols um, is generated by that finite state machine. So then we can ask, what is the set of strings that a particular finite state machine can generate? What is the set of all strings it can generate? The other way we can use a finite state machine is to recognize or accept strings. Uh, really, I probably ought to say accept here um, and use the term recognize for languages as a whole, but let's just uh, not worry too much about that detail right now. So here the idea is that you're given a string of symbols. You're given a string made up of symbols from the alphabet. And you want to know whether to accept that or reject that string. So you take your finite state machine and you start in the starting state. And uh, you look at the first symbol in the string and you follow the transition that's labeled with that symbol. And you just keep following transitions that are labeled by uh, the symbols. So for example, if our string is 1, 0, 1, we start in our initial state, and we see 1, so we go to B, and then we see 0, so we go to D, and then we see another 1, so we go to C. And then if at the end of the string we end up in an accepting state, then we know that that string is accepted by that finite state machine. So we ask, do we end up in an accepting state or not? Okay. And it's important that we process all the symbols in the string. We can't stop halfway through the string without looking at all the symbols in the string. So we have to process every symbol in the string, and when we get to the end of the string, we ask, are we now in an accepting state or not? And then we can ask about the set of all strings that are accepted in this manner. Okay, they form a language. If we end up in a state that is not an accepting state, then that string is said to be rejected and it's not included in the language that that finite state machine defines. So we've seen an informal example of a finite state machine and we specified it with a picture or a graph. That was this, this graph right here. Now let's give a formal definition of a finite state machine. And a finite state machine, such as the one we saw before, is described by five different things. So we can say our machine, we can give it a name M, and we can say it's defined by five things, or a quintuple of things. And what are each of those things? Well, we need a set of states. Okay, this, so Q is a finite set of states. We do not allow an infinite number of states. Generally, the number of states in a finite state machine is, is relatively small, on the order of a, perhaps a half a dozen or so. The next thing we have is sigma. This is our alphabet of symbols. And again, this is a finite set, and typically it's quite small. In our example, the alphabet was uh, just the symbols 0 and 1, so it had a size of only 2. But in other examples, we'll see our alphabet might have 3 or 4 or 5 different symbols in it. Then we need the edges, and this is given by, this is the Greek letter delta, it's given by, given by the transition function delta. And delta is a function that takes two arguments, if you will, and gives a, it gives a result. In other words, uh, given a state and a symbol, it tells you what state you would go to. So for example, if we're in state C and we see a 1, Okay, the transition function, given a state C and, and a symbol 1, says go to state D. On the other hand, if we're in state C and we see a 0, uh, we go to state A. So, delta is the transition function that maps states and symbols to states. We also need our starting state. Sometimes we call it the initial state. And we generally will denote that with uh, little q sub zero to indicate that it's the starting state. And this has to be one of the elements in our set q, so it has to be a state. Uh, 
And finally, we need a set of accepting states, or sometimes we call them final states. And this should be a subset of Q. Uh, typically, it's a non-empty subset, but it can, um, I suppose, be empty, in which case the finite state machine would accept no strings as sort of a degenerate uh, uh, case. But um, typically, there will be one or more finite states uh, sorry, final states in the finite state machine. Now let's take a look at our example finite state machine and see how we can specify this machine formally. Here I've repeated the diagram that I showed before. Uh, by the way, uh, final states are indicated with a double circle here. So we can see just looking which states are our final states. So we have to have five things. The Q, sigma, Q sub 0, F, and delta. So let's go through each one of these. First of all, we need a set of states. Here, uh, our states are labeled, so we have four items, A, B, C, and D. Those are our states. We can see from this diagram that the only symbols in our alphabet are 0 and 1, because edges are labeled with zeros and 1s. So there are only two symbols in our our alphabet. Our initial state, Q0, is the state A, so that's something from big Q, so we'll say that Q0 is A. And our set of final states, I should put a brace there, oh there's only one uh, thing there, one state there, and that's D. And finally we have delta, our transition function. Now with a finite state machine, we have a finite number of states and a finite number of symbols, so we have a very finite function of two things, uh, two arguments. So it's probably easiest to specify that function as an array like this. So let's go ahead and fill this in. If we're in state A and we see a zero, we go to state C. If we're in state A and we see a one, we go to state B. If we're in state B, we see a 0, we go to D, and if we see a 1, we go to A. So if we're in state B, we see a 0, we go to D, and if we see a 1, we go back to A. If we're in state C and we see a 0, we go to A, if we see a 1, we go to D. If we see a 0, we go to A, and if we see a 1, we go to D. And finally, if we're in state D, we see a 0, we go up to B, and a 1, we go to C. B. C. So, assuming I did this correctly, uh, this is our transition function delta. So, we have now defined formally this finite state machine. Before we move on, let's uh, look at this example finite state machine and ask ourselves what kinds of strings does it accept? Uh, there's clearly some sort of a pattern here. Uh, to this thing. It has a certain uh, kind of symmetry to it. We might wonder, what, it, what is this thing doing? What, what is the, the meaning of this finite state machine, if you will? And, well, hmm, clearly our alphabet is zeros and ones, so it accepts strings of zeros and ones. So we can use this notation right here, braces with an asterisk as a superscript, to indicate uh, all strings of zeros and ones. Okay, um, is this is the set of all strings of zeros and ones? Um, but which so but it doesn't accept every string of zeros and ones. For example, if we have just a string one one, we'd be back in A, and, and if that were all we had, it wouldn't accept that. So let's maybe one thing we can do is play with this thing and and see what it accepts. So let's start with A, and you know one zero would take us to D. So let's just write that down. Um, let's see, what else? We could do uh, 0, 1, and, and that would be accepted as well. Uh, what about if we did 1, 0, 0, and then 0? So we could do 1, 0, 0, 0. Or we could do 1, 0, 1, 1. And uh, we could go on and on like that. Um, we might see that we could go zero zero zero. Let's see, zero zero 
one one zero one. So if I've got that zero zero one one zero one, um, we could keep trying those things for a while, and uh, after a while you might start to notice a certain pattern. Uh, you might, for example, notice that the edges that are horizontal uh, are labeled with one, while the edges that are vertical are labeled with zeros. And you might notice an even odd thing going on here. Um, for example, to get from A to D, we've got to get over to B, and if we, it would one, a single one would do that. If we had a, a two ones, we'd have a, uh, go back to A, and we'd need a third one. If we had four ones, we'd go back to A, but if five ones would take us to B. So, uh, if you think about it, um, everything uh, on this side, states A and C, um, have an even number of ones. So let me just write that down. Even number of ones. So if our string has an odd number, we cross over this, this squiggly line that I've drawn down the middle. And, uh, but uh, maybe we come down here with a zero, but if we go back over here, uh, now we have an even number of ones. So on this side of the squiggly line, we have an odd number of ones. Uh, now if you followed me this far, you probably noticed that the same thing's going on with the zeros. So I'll draw a squiggly line right here. And if you look at, uh, to get from A to D, we're going to have to cross the squiggly line once. So we need to have one zero. And if we go back up above it again with another zero, we'd have to have a third zero to get below it. It doesn't matter whether we go up here and come down there or go up here and come down there. We're going to have an odd number of zeros down here and an even number of zeros up here above the squiggly line. So uh, the empty string, we, we, if we start with nothing, uh, we have an even number of zeros and an even number of ones, namely no zeros and no ones. To get down to D, we need an odd number of both ones, because it's to the right of the red squiggly line, and an odd number of zeros. So what's happening is that this finite state machine is accepting all the strings of zeros and ones where there's an odd number of zeros and um, an odd number of ones. Okay, and so that's true of all of our examples. An odd number of ones, one, two, three ones in this one, and an odd number of zeros, three zeros uh, in this example here. So we have argued to ourselves what sorts of strings this finite state machine accepts, and it accepts the set of all strings of zeros and ones where the number of zeros is odd and the number of ones is odd.